I'm just happy to be here today for this launch of a Chora plan. And Chora is a Swahili word meaning drawing. But here it's an issue of uh, being able to draw a plan on some of the issues that we've mentioned. Savings, investments, uh, how we make our payments, how we formalize ourselves. So that's part of the conversations that we'll actually be able to go through this morning. And we are just overwhelmed as KBA to be able to see uh, the commitment that all of us uh, have on this particular course in empowering our individuals, our businesses, and the economy. So when we come to this discussion of uh, financial literacy, we need to reflect at a personal level and even at a corporate level as to how we can be able to add value to those around us. Beginning with ourselves, because when you look at investments, when you look at savings, even at a personal level, we are not where we are supposed to be. There is something more we can be able to do, even as we seek to empower others. So on behalf of KBA, we just extend our gratitude that you've uh, been able to come this early. It's uh, a chilly, cold uh, morning, but we are very, very grateful. And then to the governor, we don't take it for granted. We are very, very grateful that you chose to be able to be with us this morning on this course. And it just shows your commitment to this particular course of financial literacy and um, financial inclusion. And uh, we look forward to collaborating with Central Bank a little bit uh, more to move this agenda forward. Because uh, I look at the Kenyan economy and uh, realize that uh, the private sector has uh, so much to be able to do to ensure that uh, we can be able to progress. And then also I look to government and uh, my prayer is that uh, even governor, we need to preach a lot of uh, hope to our businesses uh, and individuals, even amidst uh, these changes, amidst the financial constraints. Uh, people are very constrained. Uh, people are losing jobs. Uh, businesses are barely surviving. But as private people, as banks, as uh, uh, people within the financial ecosystem, we need to preach hope in that uh, let uh, businesses keep doing what they are doing currently, it will actually be able to uh, survive and uh, thrive. Because uh, I can't promise that we are going to have it easy. It's actually going to be much more harder going forward. But the thing is, we should not be able to give up. So that hope is very, very critical, Governor, for us to be able to ensure that we are moving forward. There are partners in the room that I just want to mention privately by Julian, so Central Bank, we are cooperating with you. There is uh, colleagues from uh, Kenya Deposit Insurance uh, Corporation, we've collaborated with you since uh, last year. There is uh, PesaLink, our subsidiary, uh, I've seen Kituk in the room. There is a uh, Kenya Mortgage Finance Company, Visa, uh, represented by Eva uh, today, Karibu Sana. There is Consumer Grassroots, there is uh, Kenya Society for the Blind, Competition Authority, uh, then uh, we also have uh, Africa Nenda. You've been with us and we are happy that you'll continue working with us on this particular journey. Governor, I was just reflecting on the aspect of uh, the competence-based uh, education that we have currently, because this is a uh, hands-on. But uh, looking at that curriculum, we realize that uh, financial literacy and uh, matters to do with economics, uh, it's not mandatory. And that may be the reason as to why maybe we are in the hole that we are in currently. So we might need to look at that competence-based uh, curriculum, be able to see even from the primary schools, we can actually be able to inculcate skills, knowledge, just to understand economics, finance, because this is day to day. Until we get to 100 years, uh, we need to understand financial literacy and uh, how economics uh, work. So it's something that we need to look at. And even at personal level, again, uh, we have our own children, we have our family members, we have our colleagues at work. We just need to be conscious and intentional on the fact that uh, 
we need to be the change that we actually desire. So let's, as at our individual levels, be able to contribute this. And even this, more specifically for banking, we have uh, within our ecosystem uh, any small shock like the affordable housing, we have to be able to do something for even our staff. Next month, there's another shock coming in the form of a social health insurance uh, fund, 2.75. Again, we need to do something. So how do we prepare ourselves, even as employees, to be able to navigate uh, those shocks? And that boils down to financial literacy and how we manage uh, our finances. I was just welcome you. So to conclude, <laughs> Governor, I and because we are in a financial literacy session, uh, I was looking at the MPC press release, Governor, uh, uh, that you released last week on fifth of uh, June, and uh, I was conversing with a friend, and he's a learned friend. So this matters economics. Some words is in a Peter Cow people. So there are two words that I picked out, and uh, I love some experts in the room to be able to assist us. And I don't ask the governor, I'll ask uh, German John Kashora to be able to assist us with one. There's a word called stickiness. Stickiness. Because for me, I refer to Black Law's dictionary. Sijapata your stickiness. So, Kashora, uh, there's a good idea. And then uh, my friend Julian, you're such a guru in matters of finance. There is a uh, award governor used in the press release called uh, RIPDP. So I was wondering whether it's fake or unreal. So I'll ask you to be able to assist us on that. On that, thank you and uh, welcome.